Okay. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Dude, be cool. Okay. Just be cool. All right. I'm trying. Welcome to Old Fashioned Finance, the podcast that mixes cocktails and high finance. I'm your host, Caleb Frankert, and I'm joined by my good friend and fellow money muddler, Jason Burnell. Caleb, can a podcast about finance be entertaining? Not without alcohol. Woo! Let's mix it up. Hey, we kind of did it. We did. Like I, that was close. <laughs> I mean, I kind of do the woo thing. The script says, well, all right, let's mix it up. There is no script. Oh, well. <laughs> Secrets out, man. <laughs> oh, you can tell by listening to the show that yeah. this is not scripted. <laughs> Thank Only goodness. certain parts. That's true. That's hey, true. how's it going? It's going good. It's yeah. going good. Finally, I'm, it's like, here we are in summer. It's 86 degrees outside. I know. You know, my bald head is sweating. I like that, though. I like do you? Heat. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I don't know. We had a baseball game last night, and yeah. we were out there. All the coaches are like, uh, this humidity is a little ridiculous. And I'm like, you know what? A week ago, we were out here <laughs> in coats. So We're going to take the heat. I like it. It doesn't take long for us to, to flip to summer in Ohio. I know. We'll put it that way, exactly. right? Wait till so. next week. It'll be winter again. <laughs> <laughs> but while we have summer, we're yes. going to drink Mai Tais. Oh, look at this. What a summer drink. Hey, and might I say, I've never, Jason, I have never had a Mai Tai. That's disappointing. Well, hopefully it's not. Hopefully. Yeah. No, this is a great drink. I can look at this drink all day. It is a handsome drink. It's just got that nice dark rum on top. You know, any drink where you have to float an ingredient, I'm a fan of. Well, yeah. I mean, that, don't you think that's kind of a bartender trick? A little bit. Although, I, hey man, I'm not, I'm not going to brag here, but I'm. I'm kind of pulling it off. I know. it's. I mean, you've had a year's <laughs> worth of practice, man. <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe I'm becoming a bartender. Uh, well, you know. It's nice to I know. I hope not. I really need you here. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to know that if this whole finance thing all comes crashing down. You, you take it back. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about what we're drinking today, Jason. I guess right. before we do, sneak peek. We're going to talk about something called a windfall today. Ooh. It's a big fancy word for... Well, a big check, money, basically, money, money. right? <laughs> so what is a windfall and what to do when you receive a windfall? So yeah. today's episode is seven things to do with a windfall. We're drinking Mai Tais. Let's jump right in. Jason, All right. Uh, there's a little bit of debate about what goes into a Mai Tai. Not a lot, but a little. So sure. I'm going to read the recipe that I it's found a popular on liquor.com. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, Definitely I think that makes a big difference. You know, I was a little surprised at one of the ingredients here and I'll get to it, but here's what we're going to do. Don't mix it all together because the first time I did this, I made that mistake. One and a half ounces of white rum. Yes. Three quarters of an ounce of orange Caracao. And look, I use Contro. People will fight me on this. I know. Fight me. Fight me. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> Contro. But you can use like triple sec or something like that. Right, uh, right. And then there is just Why, orange but... Caracao, however you say that. Right. We've been down this road before, haven't we? Yes, we have. <laughs> Three quarters of an ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. Yes. A half an ounce of Orgeat. Okay. Orgeat. Orgeat is a kind of like a simple syrup. Yeah. Uh, I believe almonds are included. Yep. <laughs> That's yep. about all I know. They milk those almonds. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's like the almond milk that you get in the grocery store. Right. You wonder where the milk comes from. Exactly. A half an ounce of dark rum. Don't. But don't. Set yet. that aside. <laughs> That's your dry ingredient. <laughs> and then garnish with a lime wheel. And some say a mint sprig. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, did not. I think mint is delightful. But you know, mint is polarizing. I know it is. Either you love it or you hate it. Mint, you know, in, a, mint in a drink with liquor, I'm good with. I'm for it. Uh, yeah. You know, the mint julep comes to mind. Oh, geez, uh, just, the whiskey smash, uh, right? You know, there, there's. I, I'm a fan, but there are some people. If you throw mint in there, it's not good. So, right, we made ours without mint today, Jason, mostly because. It wasn't my mint plant in my office died. <laughs> it died. <laughs> apparently, you have to water those things. You apparently are so sad in that office that plants can't even live. <laughs> well, I went on vacation and nobody watered it when I was oh, gone. Well, you could have. Which is crazy because you plant mint in the ground and it will never die. I know. I don't. I don't get it. So I was like, hey, we could put mint outside. We'll have it all the way across the yard. We should. <laughs> well, let's see how my ties. All right, out. let's do it. So wait, before we do. Oh man, come and on. Steps. Steps. Add the white rum, the caracao, the lime juice, the orgy, and do a shaker with crushed ice. Shake lightly for about three seconds. Don't yes. go crazy on this, yes. okay? It is a cold drink. It's a cold drink. It's a delicate drink, I think. It seems like it. Pour that into a double rocks glass filled up with ice. 
<laughs> and double. then yes. you're going to take that half an ounce of dark rum and you're just going to float ever it. so slightly float it on the top. And Ugh. boy, is it pretty. Garnish it with your lime wheel and your mint sprig if your plant hasn't died and go from there. I, I look at this drink and I always, I'm always i always surprised with how that dark rum just floats on Isn't top. it cool? It's cool. It's cool. It's, it's a pretty drink. All right, let's do I've this. I've never had I, one I'm before. I'm salivating, man. First Stop time. talking. Cheers. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Ooh, my tie. Oh, that's good. Oh, I told okay. you you'd like it. Okay, I'm a fan. You're I not like that. I mean, you're not like usually grabbing the rum. No, not usually. Yeah, I Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so my personal opinion is sometimes rum just kind of blends into the background. Yeah, it does. I, but yeah. rum with lime juice is something special. You know, the orgy, whatever, there's something else in there that just spices it up. It feels like a Ricky sort of. Yeah, right? oh, lime yeah. juice yeah, and yeah. uh but, but with a little something extra. So it's pretty to look at. It tastes wonderful. Today it's 86 degrees. This is probably going to go down pretty fast. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. We should be outside right now. Speaking of going down fast, crash and burn. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> on, on to the podcast. All right. So we're going to talk about windfalls today, Jason. First yeah. of all, in your own words, what is a windfall? A windfall is a amount of money that you receive unexpectedly this does not count a tax return <laughs> it shouldn't not if you've done Sorry. any tax planning correctly <laughs> no this would be like an inheritance maybe you sold something that you were surprised with what you got money that you just didn't expect to receive a bonus yeah somebody approaches you and says i want to buy your that rusty car out back right right yeah yeah Unexpected. <laughs> I, I think I wrote down a large, often unexpected financial gain. Okay. Okay. So it could just be a gain too. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Windfall. Yeah. <laughs> Surprise. Um, windfall. I would say most commonly known inheritances. Inheritances. Bon- bonuses. Probably the big one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would be. I would be really, really surprised if you know, folks didn't think of inheritance instantly. Well, it's probably the most common windfall, Jason, and. I, I did a little bit of research because you might be out there listening going, oh, yeah, windfall. What do I do? Yeah, that's like saying, what do I do when I win the lottery? It's not going to happen. Well, actually, on average, U.S. retirees in a recent survey done somewhere that I didn't write down. <laughs> on average, U.S. retirees plan to leave about $177,000 in inheritance to each of their children. So And never, ever talk about it. And never talk about <laughs> it. But on average... You know, plan for a windfall at some point in your life. Yeah, yeah. Right? I mean, I, I think you're going to have some gauge on whether your family has got the wherewithal. If your family's, you know, keeping up, you know, not having issues, not asking you for loans, you're going to know. You're going to know if they have a reasonable nest egg. Yeah. So, and some families are very open and talk about this all a, this stuff. Um, I would say that is by far the exception. Yeah, it is. I am uncomfortable when family talks about stuff like that. Even given my occupation. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm the absolute opposite. I'm like, why aren't we talking about this? You know, nobody survives this planet. This is true. That doesn't mean we have to think about it all the time. I know. I'm not saying we should. I just, but don't worry. I do. <laughs> <laughs> you do. You do for sure. But so let's talk about it. Let's say that that event happens. Okay. So we're, we're going to kind of go through seven different things that you can do with a windfall. Seven things that we really suggest you do with a windfall. Right. Uh, and we'll dive into some of the details. So the first thing to do, Jason, I have on here, breathe. Yeah, I, I'm going to, I'm almost always going to tell my clients, you know what? Slow down. Okay. Yeah. Like, I think oftentimes you're still grieving if it's an inheritance. Obviously, if you get a bonus, maybe you're, maybe you're uh, emotional maybe you for to, a different maybe you need reason. To pump the brakes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I think taking your time whenever an unexpected amount of money shows up in your situation is just good advice. Yeah. You know, don't go drive through the car lot just because you're <laughs> looking. Okay. Like, yep. that's crazy town, but take some deep breaths. Well, and like, like we said a lot of times, and, and just the statistic that the most common windfall is an inheritance, and the average retiree plans on it. Look, folks, most likely, if you have a windfall event, it's going to be something that is tied to emotions. It's right. going to come from an event that is probably, you're probably not thinking as clearly as you ought to be when you make financial decisions. So breathe, let it simmer. 
Right. There's no no clock ticking. I mean, sometimes there is. They're ten years technically now. Yeah. <laughs> even that, you know, it's so long. We're talking like six, maybe eight months. Don't make any major financial decisions. If you're the folks handling the estate, if it is an inheritance, guys, slow down. Yeah. Okay. You're going to miss something. Yeah. Like just accept the fact that this is a six to eight month, maybe 12 month or longer process. Mm -hmm. Take your time. And I see it always like folks are just rushing to the attorneys trying to get things done. Yep. And it's a lot of effort. Ouch. Um, so, <laughs> sorry, I just that was my, my knee knee. on the table. <laughs> also a painful emotional yeah, event. Breathe, man, breathe. <laughs> <sighs> wow. Um, yeah, so. Great exchange. <laughs> I'm going to have to excuse myself. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I think something that I've said on the podcast frequently and something that I say to my clients, you know, I can do a really great job as a financial advisor if I can get you as my client to separate emotion from money, Right. It's easier said than done because mm. money always comes with emotions. If it's money that you've saved for retirement, it comes with the blood, sweat, and tears and the toil that went into earning that money. When you see it lose value, there's emotions involved. Sure, for sure. Certainly in this case, there's emotions involved. Yep. But my advice stays the same. You need to be able to as best as you can. And if you can't do it, hire a financial advisor who's going to hold you to it. Try to keep emotions out of the money conversation. I think we've probably both experienced this too, where folks have like a strange connection that's emotional to like a stock or a particular amount of money because yeah. it was moms or dads or grandmas or grandpas. It, it It's weird. Yes. I am like probably the most <laughs> unattached emotionally to things. Uh -huh. I just don't like have that. I don't know. I will. I, strange. So, but folks attach themselves to a stock that dad decided to buy in 1974. It hasn't made a single dime <laughs> in 45 years, yeah. but it doesn't but matter. It was, dad's. it was dad's. And you know, dad was a smart man. God, that's, ah. dad's, dad's holy underwear and the, uh, the drawer were a part of dad too. And probably that is not an inheritance, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I think definitely, like you said, when you can come back to it thinking clearly right. and actually be in the position to make financial decisions, that's when you need to start attacking this right. first step, breathe, separate emotions from finance. We do it all the time. The second step, Jason, and also a problem with getting rolling too soon on some of this stuff is we might forget some details like, oh, I don't know, the tax man. Oh, geez. Of course <laughs> you would bring this up, you tax nerd. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it does happen. And and oftentimes it's like, you know, the guy or the girl who's trying to process the paperwork at the annuity company. Yeah. And they you, like, just, just check these boxes and uh, you know, I don't get paid to do this. <laughs> just so, do this. So it's out you know, of my just hair. Just get it out of here. And then you get a check and a tax bill and you're like, you mean that entire distribution was taxable? Yeah, it was. Yeah. I'm sorry. And guess what? It's not my problem anymore. Yeah. And See you ya. can't undo it. Yep. So take your time on this too. I mean, understand the rules around IRAs and retirement accounts, annuity contracts. It's just really important and confusing. So you need an expert in your corner, quite yeah. frankly, because there's all different kinds of strategies when it comes to you know the distribution. I just sat through an hour and 15 minutes about inheriting a trust, inheriting an IRA. Oh, bad, bad, awful bad. And it was just <laughs> like so... It can be done. Unbelievable. You know, and this is where it's fun. If you talk to an attorney, it can be done. Yeah. When you talk to a custodian, yeah, sure, it can be done. We're not going to do it. Yeah. My, <laughs> my bro, Michael Kitsis, was trying to make a case for this. I get it. There are cases where sometimes... It's not about taxes. It's about, I can't leave this asset sure. to my alcoholic son. Sure. Okay. It'll be destructive. Now that's different, but you just, th the point is the rules are complicated and it's worth getting some advice. Yeah. If you're on the, so before we make the mistake and go down the estate planning route, which would be, Hey, really think about making a trust a yeah. beneficiary because of here, here's all the landmines you got to step around. Absolutely. And not only is it, it's, it's legal and you can do it. Yep. But you have to you have to approach it very cautiously, and then when you're gone, somebody else has to do all the right things as well. 
Uh, so as the inheritor, make sure you understand the situation yep. because you might be in a situation where, hey, I inherited an IRA. What do we do? Well, without looking at it, I can just say, blah, here's I the I really deal. would like a new dot, dot, dot. With, without knowing that you know a trust is involved and things like that. So yes, you need to know it. You need to have the right person in your corner. Yep. Step two, don't forget the tax man. That's a big one. And Jason, I failed to mention that these seven steps really do kind of go in order. They do. So yeah. breathe. Don't forget the tax man. In most cases, when it comes to taxes, you can inherit a pretty good chunk of money before estate taxes are involved or before really, in general, even non-qualified stuff, any immediate tax event is involved. But right. you need to know your situation. Absolutely. So don't forget the tax man. Make sure whatever in eight months when you think you're thinking clearly and the, the Corvette uh, that you ordered is in stock and you want to go ahead and make that decision, uh, make sure that you set enough aside to take care of Uncle Sam because you don't want him on your bad side. That's right. Step three, Jason, is catch up. Yeah. The Not good the old red stuff in the bottle. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the well, good old-fashioned budget, right? Yeah. Let's pay some debt off. Let's get our financial household in order. You know, I think one of the best ways to be a good steward and an example of the testament that is your potential family's life work, especially in an inheritance, is to get your household in order. Mm -hmm. I don't know of a parent who's like, yeah, I definitely want my kids to have a lot of financial stress <laughs> that just doesn't exist. So I think that that, you know, if mom or dad or grandma or grandpa aren't here anymore. I think that's probably one of the best things you can do is get your financial house in order. And I have seen this example where someone inherits money and they're in a situation where they've got auto loans and student right. debt and all these other things. And they think mom or dad or grandpa, whoever wanted me to enjoy this money or this was their legacy. And I feel bad just paying down debt. Don't. Right. That's what frees you up to do the other things the correct way. Exactly. Um, so if, if most likely their wishes were to give you some financial flexibility and freedom, there's your ticket. Don't ignore it. I've had the conversation where we're talking about, well, let's invest and, and we'll just keep working on the debt. Yeah, we'll keep working on the yeah, debt. No. no, it doesn't work that way. I, I think you got to go in this order. Catch up. Get those past due bills out of the way if there are any. Pay off the credit cards. Oh, geez. Pay off the auto loans. Get rid of that stuff. Absolutely. Um, mortgage may even factor into this depending on, it, it on, would, on your mortgage and the size of the, it the would uh, for windfall. Me, it would for me because I think the opportunity is rare when you get you know something like this happen and it's just like plops down on your lap. It's just such a strange thing where you know you can you can really like catapult yourself forward. Mortgage out of the way, retirement savings goes way up, vacation funds go way up. Mm -hmm. You know, things really start to take shape when you don't have a mortgage payment anymore potentially. Absolutely. So I again, I think it's just something to really consider. So uh, you could almost reference back to, uh, we had a, an episode called The Order of Savings, mm -hmm. where we went through basically where your savings needs to go, which direction, which order it needs to go in. And this is a, a great example. If you receive a windfall, obviously listen to this episode. You are, <laughs> you're listening right now. You are. You're so smart. <laughs> but you could go back and listen to The Order of Savings too yeah. if you want to get into all of that stuff. Uh, step four, or not step four, but the fourth thing you could do would be balking up on emergency funds. And I put in their sinking funds also, okay? Let's say you've caught up on all the past dues and there's still a chunk left over. Jason, this is a great opportunity to bulk that emergency fund up. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, a couple words of caution here. You know, if you haven't ever had an emergency fund, you know, maybe that six months worth of expenses just isn't enough mm -hmm. because you have a propensity to spend all of your income. You know, you might wanna just bulk this up just a little bit heavier. Sinking funds also, you mentioned, it is just to me one of the most practical everyday kind of management tool that helps people not have surprise Christmas. Yeah. Okay. Cause surprise Christmas is no fun. <laughs> not like open the, open the gifts and surprise. No, it's oh, open no, that's the, good. Christmas. Yeah. That's yeah. open up the envelope on in January from your credit card statement and it's surprise. <laughs> surprise. And just, just start funding that's those. Exactly what we said in the sinking fund episode. We did. <laughs> surprise, oh, that's awesome. Christmas surprise. So yeah, I mean, just, set aside the money you're going to spend on a regular basis. I think it's great. And it's a good way to get started. Yeah. Well, I think bulking up the emergency fund is a no-brainer. Our sinking funds episode we did a few weeks back, very valuable. But I think that you know, folks out there might be listening going, yeah, right. How am I going to fund all these sinking funds? Now, this just isn't practical. 
Windfall, great time to bulk those Yeah, and up. a bonus great for sure. Time. Like, I mean, don't just think, oh, I deserve that new jet ski. You know, hold that thought. Okay, Jason. hold that thought. Oh, but wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> Step five. Gosh, I keep calling them steps. They're not steps. The fifth thing you <laughs> could do, Jason, <laughs> have In- another mai tai. Important. <laughs> We're not there yet. Don't forget retirement. Oh gosh. Don't forget retirement. Right. Just because it's not coming out of your paycheck and going into your 401k doesn't mean that a windfall can't be used to boost your retirement savings one way or another. Yeah, so in the case of a bonus, you're going to have it come through a paycheck. It might actually be, you know, 401k money. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if you get an inheritance, take some of that, max out some IRAs. It's smart. It's a good place to put some of these funds. Go through the order of savings again. That's right. Um, max out the retirement. You know, maybe maybe hold back the def- you know your from your paycheck, bulk up that four hundred one k contribution, and mm-hmm. use the the windfall money to get you through your your monthly uh, budget. Right. 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 But then non qualified savings becomes an option, or non qualified investments. Yeah, I again. call that the I like to call that the retire early bunny. So yes, absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, that to me is it now I. I'm really big about, you got to give this money some purpose, man. Absolutely. So set it aside. And I I think that's really the purpose of this whole episode and these seven things that you can do with, with Mm -hmm. a windfall is don't fritter it away. Don't set it in your checking account and then go, where did that money go? Yeah. Uh, Taco Bell, (laughs) uh, Taco Bell, TJ Maxx, uh, what are, you know, Uh, bourbon, uh, the garden center. Uh, I would never say that about bourbon. (laughs) So number six, Bourbon. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, kind of. <laughs> Number six, uh, be generous. Yeah. This I'm a is giver. really important to us. Yeah, it is. I love being generous with the gifts that, quite frankly, someone else is sharing with me. It's a nice way to see that inheritance last beyond even you. Mm-hmm. And it, it may be like, I replaced the bathroom stalls in my church. <laughs> you, yeah. It, something simple, but it does matter. This changes money. Yeah. You know, for a lot of folks, they don't have a whole lot of opportunity to be generous. They're making ends meet. They're paycheck to paycheck. Here's an opportunity, obviously, to set yourself up. Yeah. You know, get out of that cycle, but also you might not have a whole lot of opportunities to be really generous but if, and, if, and make a big... If you take the average 170 and you use the old tithing rule right? Yeah. 10%. When else in your life have you been able to give yeah. 17 grand away? Absolutely. And you're, again, there's probably something in your church or your community that that will have a lasting impact. That to me is just so much bigger than any of this stuff. And, and you might say, Oh, mom or dad didn't want us to, you know, they would have just, rah, rah. you know what? This is yours now. So, <laughs> But more often than not, Jason, if mom and dad left money, they did that out of generosity to an extent, right? Yeah, um, but you might not have liked your mom and dad, so well, maybe this is a great motivation to get, get So em. we're probably get going em. back to number one here on the breathe, right? <laughs> I'm <But> just kidding. <laughs> honestly, uh, you know, I think that most folks that do receive a wind, windfall, which is not always an inheritance, but in, in the case of an inheritance, a lot of times people think, how can I honor mom or dad with this? Right. You know? Think of their favorite charity or their church, or, you know. Right. There is a lasting impact, right? And, to- and and you you and I know this. Like when we talk to clients that are nearing the end of their life, they oftentimes still have that uh, closed-fisted, I got to preserve this. I don't know how long I'm going to live. Right. Um, so even though they may, may have been generous, they couldn't give it from their nest egg. Hey, and- I say it all the time. We're not born with expiration dates printed on us, so we're doing the best we can. <laughs> Bummer. It'd make, an, it'd make uh, actuaries life a lot easier. Yeah. <laughs> Although they're pretty darn good. They are. It's scary. It's creepy. Hey, if you ever run into a an actuary at a par- at, at a party oh or gosh, a bar and they're drinking a Mai Tai, don't strike up a conversation. <laughs> How do you know an actuary is outgoing? He's looking at your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Dad joke. <laughs> Oh boy, insurance oh, joke, even worse, that <laughs> insurance joke. So be generous. Obviously, that's near and dear to us. Somebody was generous for you to end up in this situation, most likely. Hey, even if it's your boss and it's a bonus, they were generous, right? <laughs> yeah, so right. So be generous. Exactly. Yeah, and, and that's something that really you should feel generous if yeah. someone has been generous with you. Sure. Okay, so let's not let's not skip over the seventh one, Jason. I know. We're bad. I'm bad at this. We are really bad at this. Gosh, dang. 
Enjoy a little bit. God. Treat yourself. Even Dave Ramsey says this. I know. Enjoy some of it. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, what's what's the things that you've been thinking about doing that you've not done, you know, vacations? I think that that's like one of the top ones. Buying a car that you really want, maybe not need, remodeling your house, you know, things that are going to be lasting for yeah. you. I'm less less about the, you know, the specific items. I, I really care about my homestead and spending time with my family yeah. and being there. Experience. Yeah, and that yeah. experience is really important. So having a nice place might be something that's important to you. But, you know, I, I just think that this has to be intentional. Mm-hmm. Okay. It, if Mandatory fun. Yeah. We say it all the time. All the time. <laughs> we're really bad at it. We're, we're recovering. We're trying to practice on this thing. So... You know, it might be a golf trip with your with your family. It might be, you know, going on a vacation. I just think that those are great examples of of enjoying this. But it doesn't necessarily have to be that. Mm-hmm. And I, I had a client that, you know, made just enough to save for retirement, received an inheritance. And their thing is, we want to go out to eat twice a week. Mm-hmm. And if that's the, the simplicity in that, it's actually kind of beautiful. Yeah. You know, I'm like proud of them and they do it. And they're not going to like, you know, uh, the most expensive steakhouses. They're just going out and enjoying the, each other's company yeah. twice a week. I think that's beautiful. Awesome. Gosh, I, I just re- got the feels. I oh, Be careful. I know. I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> not on my podcast. <laughs> Shut up. You have emotions too. <laughs> <laughs> they're in there somewhere. I promise. <laughs> I'm going to pull them out. <laughs> Enjoy. Treat yourself. Whoever... How I mean, if your boss gives you a bonus, they want you to enjoy it. If yeah. you inherit some money, they want you to enjoy it. But there is a reason that this is number seven on our things to do list. Yeah. I, I know I keep going back and saying it's not steps, but it really could be looked at in steps. Too many times we put this one first and yes. then there's no money to catch up on bills, no money to bulk up the emergency fund or be generous. Right. right. So yeah, I think this should be the last one, but it's an important one and don't it, forget it. It is. Definitely. All right. Well, that was a fun one. It was. Mai Tais in Hawaii with oh, an inheritance. Man. This is really good. I honestly, for some reason, when I heard Mai Tai, I thought coconut was involved somehow. Yeah, I'm out if it's coconut. I'm yeah, out. I'm, I, and that's why I've avoided this drink as long as I have. Guess what? No coconut. I no like coconut. Mai Tais. Yeah, but I can feel it in my shoulders. There's a lot of liquor in this. You know what? There is. Rum does nothing to me. Oh, whatever. Thanks for having a drink with us this week. (laughs) It's time to close out the tab. If you have a question or a topic you want addressed on the Old Fashioned Finance Podcast, be sure to email us at podcast at bluejfg.com. We would love to hear from you. Don't forget to share the show with someone you love or just someone who needs a little money muddling themselves. You can stay up to date with all of the latest action by following us on Facebook. Old Fashioned Finance is brought to you by Blue Jay Financial Group. That's bluejfg.com and produced by Pottery Studios. We've been your hosts, Caleb and Jason. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. My tie. My tie. <laughs> no, my tie. No, mine. 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 My tie. Mine. <laughs> <laughs>pursuant and applicable state exemption. All verbal and written consent on this presentation is for information purposes only. Opinions expressed herein are solely those of Blue Jay, unless otherwise specifically cited. Material presented is believed to be from reliable sources, and no representations are made by our firm as to other parties' informational accuracy or completeness. All information or ideas provided should be discussed in detail with an advisor, accountant, or legal counsel prior to implementation.